All right, let's take a look at the odds to win the CFP uh, this year. I do want to ask you, because we obviously you guys said you both take Georgia over the field. Yes. Um, they're obviously favorites to win it this season. But who are some X factors that could possibly stop Georgia's title run? Uh, starting with, obviously, that team right under them, Alabama. Yeah, so if we're starting with Alabama, you obviously the one storyline we've talked about all offseason is the quarterback position. We had a pretty good idea that it was going to be Jalen Milrow. They announced he, him as right. the starter today. I think people kind of forget the guys at Alabama are recruiting, even if we're unsure of them, they're still all four and five stars, man. Right. Like, I understand with times that we've seen him on the field, he has struggled. He has not looked like the sharp quarterback that you've wanted. But I will remind everybody of this. Before Alabama was putting out these Heisman Trophy winners, these top three picks, whether it was Jalen Hurts, Bryce Young, you name it, we had a lot of guys that you said, oh, well, I don't know if they're the best quarterback necessarily, whether it was John Parker Wilson, our colleague Greg McElroy. People were unfair yeah. to Greg. Greg yeah. won a national championship, right? So we're kind of back to that front end where people are like, can they really win it without a quarterback that we're not sure if he's going to be a Heisman candidate right. or number one overall pick? Bro, Alabama's been doing this for 15 years. I think they'll be okay. That's very true. Yeah, yeah. Michigan, yes. what do you think about them? So the quick aside here is you got to hope that J.J. McCarthy goes from being good to great. But the thing that stands out to me with this team is the two-headed monster in the backfield. You have, in my opinion, two of the five best running backs in the country with Blake Corum and Donovan Edwards. We've seen at different times of the year how both of these guys run over all over the field and anybody that's in front of them and break tackles with anybody that's behind them, right? Like, so that is the type of football where if Jim Harbaugh has that as his, at his disposal, that is a difference maker because we know they're going to play defense. We know McCarthy's going to be good enough to where, honestly, had they not spotted TCU 21 points yeah. in the first quarter of that game last yeah. year in the, in the semifinal, they probably would have been playing for the national championship. Yeah, for so sure. as long as those two guys are healthy, they are going to be in every single football game that they play. Okay, let's talk about a team that had CFP hopes last season. They had the Heisman Trophy winner. They weren't able to even do it in their last game of the season. USC, how can they possibly throttle Georgia's chances? Well, I think everything starts in the trenches when you look at the offensive line and defensive line. Now, week zero, they were able to play against San Jose State. I'm not going to sit up here and say that I was impressed by their offensive line and defensive line. I think it's still a work in progress. But if you want an opportunity to compete for a national championship, the trenches is where you have to be better. Last year, I literally seen this team get punked. Yes, I use that word. They got punked by Utah not once but twice. Their offensive line and defensive line. So if they want an opportunity to be able to contend and make the college football playoffs, I know you have the Heisman Trophy uh, winner in Caleb Williams, and there's an opportunity for him to win it this year. Yep. But if you can't block up front and, you know, impose your will, and defensively, if you can't be stout against the run and go get after the quarterback, Having a Heisman Trophy winner is not going to yeah, matter. Don't for matter. sure, for sure. We saw that last season. But let's take a look back really quickly because Lyle said that Harry Douglas is the mayor is. of Louisville. He, in fact, is. Uh, can we just talk about his stats? 2,924 receiving yards. That's second all-time in Louisville history. 13 receptions, 223 yards versus Kentucky highlights? in Your 2007, highlights? which, by the way, a single-game school record for receiving yards. And he is a two-time All-Big right East now. first team. 2007, man. second team, All-American. That is one Harry Douglas. So, so great to have him specifically for this show. HD, just gas you up a little bit. And with that, we welcome in Louisville AD Josh Hurd. Thank you so much for joining us. We were just gassing up HD a little bit. He was pretty good. He was pretty good, right? Yeah, he, he was okay. He was okay. <laughs> just a little slow. You know, and uh, from time to time, he still mentions that he went to Louisville. <laughs> oh, just a little bit. You know, he hasn't been walking around here shaking everybody's hand. Not at all. No, right? Not at all. No. You know, you mentioned some of your other your school's athletics, your other teams, not the one that we're getting ready to talk about out here. But I'm curious for your from your perspective how that does affect sort of those other sports because you guys are known for women's volleyball, you are known for basketball, field hockey, those things. So how does this day and the addition of these teams affect those sports as well? Oh, it's a huge impact on those teams. And I, you know, as I've had conversations with our coaches, you know, hey, how do you feel about this? If this is, a, you know, if this comes to fruition. And they're excited, yeah. you know, from a recruiting standpoint, from a TV visibility standpoint, you know, even from a fan standpoint, you know, one of the things is travel and, you know, like it, it's not that hard to get to California or to get to Dallas. So we'll, we'll, we'll manage it. We'll figure it out. And uh, like I said, really, really exciting day for the league. Yeah. 
Okay, so you mentioned it. I just want to bring a little volleyball conversation in here. You mentioned how good your volleyball team is. I played volleyball at University of Miami. Thank you. I'm, no, I'm just kidding. But the other day, 92,003 yeah. people at a Nebraska volleyball game. How wild it was, was that? It was to watch? awesome. Yeah. It was awesome. And there's actually a, a connection with Nebraska with our head coach. Yeah. Uh, Danny played at Nebraska, uh -huh. uh, won a national championship as a player, as an assistant coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we actually had an event that Danny was at Wednesday evening when that transpired. And first of all, we were talking about how impressive and awesome it was. Right. But then I was like, how can we? I was going to ask, are you guys going to do that? Like, I don't want to say one up them because you're not going to one up. Of course, that. of course. But like, what can we do right. to put the spotlight on Louisville and right. Louisville volleyball? And I'll go ahead and throw it out there publicly. I don't know if we'll get it done, but we said, what if we did a volleyball match at Churchill Downs, home of the Kentucky oh, Derby? Oh, man. Now we're talking. Josh, that look at you. Yeah. See, it all so starts dope. with a vision. Exactly. The Bible says, "When there's that. no vision, the people will perish." <laughs> Josh, I'll be there for that one. I'll be oh, there for that. All right, guys, we're taking a quick look at the odds to win the 2023 Heisman Trophy. Caleb Williams, right there at the top, right above your guy, Jaden Daniels, Jordan Travis on there, Quinn Ewers, and Sam Hartman. So we're gonna do some rapid-fire predictions, guys, really fast, just to take a look at big picture when it comes to college football season. And we're gonna start with. Caleb Williams, do you think that he will repeat as the Heisman winner this year? I think so. I think he has a great opportunity. I think one of the things that's going to help him, they have a phenomenal freshman. And watching him in week zero, Zachariah Branch, the young man is electrifying, and he does a great job of making people miss. All right, so since we're on the subject of LSU, FSU, that rematch is happening on Sunday. A lot of people are looking at that matchup because for both of these teams, it could make or break their season. Obviously has a lot of CFP implications. So what are you looking forward to and why is this game so important, HD? I'll say, and I'll take the Florida State side of things because they are in the uh, ACC. When you look at LSU being in the SEC, the SEC has been big brother to everyone. Right. Right. They're, they're the team in the last 25 years that have has won national championship after national championship. So tone setting to start the season for your conference, being able to beat a team that's ranked fifth in the country. The next thing I would say, I think it's pivotal for Florida State is because when you look at all the history from that team, Bobby Bowden, Mickey Andrews, Deion Sanders, Derek Brooks, I grew up watching those guys. Carly Ward. And when FSU is back in the thick of things, college football is better. So that's why I think it's important for Florida State. It is. I, I think a lot of the same applies for LSU in terms of getting off to that fast start. The amazing thing to me about this game, I know I'm getting off without, you know, some analytics here, uh -huh. but the thing that's very interesting to me about this game is last year we went into this exact same game talking about these two yeah. teams possibly being a couple of years away, and now we're both talking about these two teams being national championship contenders. Yeah. I think that's just impressive, and I think it says a lot not but just about both of these programs, but about the players that we're going to be seeing on Sunday as well. So I'm really looking forward to that one. Who you got in the matchup? I'm going to go LSU. Okay. I'm going to go LSU. My brother went to Florida State. Oh, yeah, that's true. F-L-O-R-I-D-A-S-T-A-T-E. Florida State, Florida State. Um, okay, State. so quickly, who do we have in this matchup? I'm going to go, go with the home team. I'm going to go with Georgia Tech. Wow, okay. Who do you got in this one? Uh, Louisville. <laughs> oh, we're going to throw those L's up, ladies and gentlemen. Louisville. That's where I went. It's going to be a really that's good That's who one. I'm representing tonight. The B. Yeah, it's definitely going to be all a about good the B. one. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.